He's short, bald, chubby, and neurotic, but now he wants to be the master of his own domain. Yes! No, not George Costanza, Mike Costanza, a struggling actor and real estate broker who is Jerry's buddy from his Queens college days. My name is Mike Costanza, and I'm here to announce that I am the real Costanza. That's right. Mike says when Jerry was working on creating the show, he called him with some exciting news. Jerry said out of our friendship, he was naming the best friend on his show after me, and I was very touched. Oh. He's been uh, with Jerry to the movies, to Chinese restaurants, to the airports, on vacation. They've double dated together. Those are most of the things Jerry and I did together. But Mike wants everyone to know that there are differences, too. George is a neurotic, self-absorbed loser that we all know. And uh, and he's a wimp. You know, Mike Costanza is a stand-up guy. And you can read all about it in Mike's new book, The Real Seinfeld, as told by the real Costanza. I just really wanted to distinguish between Mike Costanza and George Costanza. But when it comes to saying goodbye to Seinfeld, Mike Costanza is a lot like the rest of us. I consider myself Jerry's number one fan, and uh, and I, I'm sorry to see the show go. I'm happy for Jerry. All right. <laughs> There you go. He's not a soup Nazi, but he played one on TV. What? No soup for you. The classic Seinfeld character was actually a takeoff on this guy, this notoriously surly real-life New York soup slinger, Al Yagena. Get out of here. But now life is imitating art, as Larry Thomas, the actor, is going into the soup business for real. Our April Wilson caught up with the man who calls himself the soup maestro. My father was a chef, so it was actually the last thing I ever wanted to do was be a chef. That's why I went into acting. So here I am, following in Dad's footsteps, and uh, life is funny. We thought it would be funny to have Larry bring a batch of his soup around the corner to the guy who inspired his TV character. You're pushing your luck, little man. So in an ideal world, we would exchange soups. Yeah, I would give him this, he would let me taste some of his. You know, but I don't think it's going to be an ideal world. I, I think he, he's been angry ever since, you know, I did that TV show. So, of course, I've never met him. When we arrived, Al was none too anxious to leave his soup kitchen. But after some coaxing, he broke the ice. Well, sort of. I just want to tell you, I really feel sorry for you. I swear to God, you should come talk to you. I showed the document. I didn't understand the word he said. Neither did we. But he was back soon enough. I really feel sorry for you. If you came, came to me, I would give you a job. But Larry wasn't looking for a job. He just wanted Al to do a taste test. Easier said than done. Good. Come on, what? please, for me. I don't want to put my life in danger. I, poison. I but eventually, they parted with a handshake. It was nice to meet you. Oh, he was very nice. He was very concerned with my welfare, that I was getting myself in trouble with an inferior soup product. That is like a donkey meat. I cannot give it to my public customer. Adios, muchacho. Ma? Jerry? Ma? Jerry? Ma, it's not true. Those damn culottes you made him wear when he was five. They're not the first TV mom and dad. There were the Bradys, the Bunkers, the Cosbys, and the Cleavers. But these particular parents don't compare to them. Compared to the Cleavers? <laughs> I mean, we steal batteries. <laughs> they didn't. And unlike other sitcom couples, their TV son is Jerry Seinfeld, the quirkiest hey, comic ever to You're hit prime guy. time. No question about it. Jerry Seinfeld here. Barney Martin has earned his trench coat, autographed by the cast of Seinfeld. For nine years, he's played Jerry's penny-pinching dad, Morty. Liz Sheridan plays Jerry's smothering mother, Helen, and together they've brought an added comic dimension to the Seinfeld cast. Jerry, you're getting your father too excited. Now that it's all over, their feelings are mixed. The feelings shared by the entire cast, especially Jerry, Julia, Jason, and Michael on the last day of shooting. Those four, they were breaking each other up for hour and hours and hours laughing hysterically at each other. Uh, before that, an hour before that, somebody would break down and cry. Um, before that, something funny would happen. I mean, it's, it, it's not just one emotion. Liz and Barney wouldn't give us any secrets about the finale, other than they think it's really funny. <laughs> I can be bought. How much? And I'll tell you the whole thing, the whole plot. Mega hit show finale. Cheers comes to mind. You people are as dear to me as my own family. 
and mash as well are bittersweet for the adoring public, but can be a double edge for the cast. David Wilde is the author of Seinfeld, the totally unauthorized tribute, and he says Jerry Seinfeld may have a hard time after his finale. My sense of it, sense of it is that uh, these people have really had a uh, you know life changing experience. The next stage is you know what do you do after being part of the greatest show, arguably in the history of television. Seinfeld may be ending, but Barney and Liz will go on in reruns as Jerry's parents and in real life as a pair of veteran actors with lots of work behind as well as ahead of them. I'll play your father and you'll play a young girl. <laughs> I would like to see that.